Hey there, I'm Lisa Niven Kelly. Thanks so much for stopping by here at Beachcation.com for the Tornado Toggle Clasp class. I'm going to be teaching you to make first a base of the toggle clasp out of some thick 14 gauge wire and I might be introducing you to a new tool. It's called the large wrap and tap. I really like it. I'm going to show you how we use it and apply it to this project. Or if you don't have that, I'm also going to show how to use a large mandrel or maybe a dry wipe pen. And then we're going to add the sculptural fun part on top. So this piece can be used as a centerpiece or as a clasp. Just have fun with it and we're going to get started. Alrighty, let's get started talking about tools and materials for the project. You're going to need a nice strong chain nose, a round nose. I like the long round nose because there's so many options on the jaw of making many different size loops. A cutter, you need a nice flush cutter and a cutter that is strong enough to cut 14 gauge sterling silver wire. That's what we're going to be working with today. So my Lindstrom's here will definitely cut it. I don't use them all the time to cut 14 gauge, just every now and then. It's not going to hurt the plier. If anything, it will dull the blade a little bit quicker, but you're going to be okay doing it, you know, just every once in a while. So I'm going to use my Lindstrom's for that. And then over here, this is called a large wrap and tap. So it's basically a stepped round nose pliers, has three different options of loops, and they're very large. So it gives you really big options for making really big loops. And we're going to use the center step to make our toggle today. If you don't have the large wrap and tap pliers, you can also use a dowel or I also use a dry wipe pen that is 16 millimeters in diameter on the circle of the dowel or the pen. It'll be equivalent to using the center step, which we're going to use to make the toggle. But this plier will make life a lot easier to turn that big toggle loop. Here we are talking about our materials. Up here we've got our 14 gauge wires. This is 14 gauge copper dead soft wire. I'm just recommending it to use for practice. Um, in my actual demo I'll be making it out of sterling but I highly recommend you make it first out of copper. Just the base of the toggle, not all the embellishing work. So that's your 14 gauge copper and here's our sterling. 14 gauge dead soft. That's six inches of each of those. Out here we've got your 22 gauge wire, three feet of 22 gauge sterling silver dead soft wire. And down here is a mandrel that I actually use for coiling on. We are going to be doing a little bit of coiling today and then cutting those coils up just to be used as beads. And I coil around this mandrel because it's stiff and it doesn't distort. It looks like a copper wire, but it's actually steel dipped in copper. It's used for some welding reason. I have no clue what it's for, but I buy it because it's stiff and cheap. If you don't have this, just use a sterling wire, any wire from maybe 20 or 18 gauge. Coil around that wire using that as your base. And then here we've got our beads. So here is a mix of Bali silver beads. Actually, technically, I've got a couple of Thai silver beads in there because I really like the way that those look. Just mm, about 10 beads here. The size is four millimeters and smaller. Just make sure that the whole of these beads will accommodate a 22 gauge wire. And over here, we have got some crystals. I use about six colored beads in this kit. These are four millimeter Swarovski crystals, actually the purple one's a three millimeter, so feel free to change that up or mix them in there a little bit. Use any beads you wish, just make sure that they are four millimeters or smaller. And again, the hole must be able to accommodate a 22 gauge wire. Just wanted to show you a finished toggle real quick so you can understand why we're about to build a coil and where it's going to apply here. So see this coil right here and right here. That looks as though we are working along in the sculptural work and built a coil right there, but it's actually quite difficult to do that and get it this tight. So let's not do it the hard way, let's do it the easy way. We're going to build a coil off of this piece and cut it up into smaller coils that will then just treat as beads and incorporate them into the wire work as we would the crystal beads or the Bali silver beads. So please take a second and view the coiling freebie that we have here on beachcation.com and you're going to coil up one foot length of your 22 gauge wire. 
Now you've made your coil from one foot of wire and it should have yielded a coil about this size which is anywhere from about an inch to an inch and a half in length. We coiled here with pre-oxidized wire mainly because the camera has a hard time focusing on the shiny coils but I want to show you now from this step how to trim these tails and then polish it up and then cut it up. So I've just finished coiling. I'm going to pull it off <clears throat> and using the tip of my cutters I'm going to cut these tails off on either side. Now your first thought might be to come right on top and cut but if you do that it leaves a little bit sticking up. Can you see that little bit right there? Sort of, kind of, okay. So what I want you to do now is come in with the tip of your cutters, instead of cutting it the way I just did, is put the tip of your cutters actually in the hole. Let me shift a little bit so you can see. But I'm going to take the tip of the cutters and put it inside that loop. One side in, one side on the outside. So I can cut it where it's already flowing nicely. And it'll leave it a little flusher. I'm going to do the other thing on the other side now. I mean the same thing on the other side. <clears throat> now if you do start with pre-oxidized wire, you want to put it back on the mandrel and polish it before going any further because it's really hard to polish up the tiny little coils. So put it back on the mandrel, <clears throat> get a pro polish pad <clears throat> or some steel wool and kind of give it a little hug and just swipe up and down. I'll do it out like this so you can see a little better. See the difference there? You don't need to be gentle with this. The reason you put it back on this mandrel is because if you try to polish it off, you'll completely bend it up and distort it. So now it's all polished up. <clears throat> Hopefully the camera can focus a little better on the coil. Now we want to take this coil and cut it up into smaller coils that we're just going to incorporate as beads. So I cut them at about a quarter of an inch or smaller. I don't actually measure it, I just kind of fake it. What you want to do is come in with your cutters and hold the two blades between two coils. And we're not going to come in and just cut. We're going to come in and press lightly between two coils to form a gap. See, now I have a gap there. And what we're looking at here is a nice tight coil. Then there's a wire running through the back that's looping around and connecting it to this coil. You want to cut that wire in the back. So with the very tip of your cutters, you want to come straight through the opening. Don't try to cut back like this because it won't work. You need to go through the opening to the back with the tip. I kind of push against it with my finger a little bit and snip. If you do that right, you'll get two clean ends like that. What I mean by clean ends is one of the tails is not sticking up where it might catch on stuff. So let me show you what typically goes wrong at this spot. So again, just pressing lightly. Now sometimes, let me make a little more of a gap. <clears throat> Some people will come in and instead of cutting straight back, they cut up on the side. Do you see how I'm up on the side now rather than, excuse me, centered? If you cut up on the side like that, this is what not to do, then this side will come off nice and clean <clears throat> and this will have a wire sticking up. If that's the case, and this will happen a couple times, it certainly happened with me when I was learning this, come in and trim it off like you did the tails in the very beginning. Just trim that little bit up. I call that cleaning your ends. So again, you just want to press lightly, go in through the opening, kind of push it against it with your finger if you need to and snip and there's your little coil. Now if you have any spots on your pre-made coil here, any gaps like any boo-boos where you didn't do a super tight coil, then go ahead and use that gap. You know I can form a bigger gap here and snip it and it'll leave my coil nice and tight. Probably get one more out of this. So there you've got a little nice pile of coils that you can then incorporate just as you would the Bali silver or the crystals. 
If you don't have the large wrap and tap, you can use anything that is round and has a thickness of about 16 millimeters. That's the thickness of the step that we used on the large wrap and tap. So I would use like a dry white pen works well, or if you can get a wooden dowel, something like that, have a thickness of 16 millimeters. So I'm going to use this to show you how to do it if you don't have the large wrap and tap. I've got my six inches here of the 14 gauge and I'm going to hold it real strongly against the pen with my thumb. You need to hold about an inch otherwise it will just dig into your finger. So squeezing real hard here, I'm going to take this and pull it really tough. This is hard, really hard because this is 14 gauge. Wrap it around like that. Now to get it off, this pen is a little bit tapered, so actually I have to pull the lid off. There we go. And now we're left with it rounded. But see the little flat part here where I was holding it? That's going to be a tiny bit of waste because I had to have a little flat piece there. So you're going to have to come in before doing the next step and just trim so you have your nice rounded bit. Let's get started making the base of our toggle and we're using here 14 gauge sterling silver dead soft wire. You may want to practice this with copper or if you're feeling rather confident go for it in your sterling. So I've got here 14 gauge 6 inches and first things first I'm going to start with a flush cut to ensure that the end of my wire is cut flat. So using my flush cutter and using the flush side of my flush cutter not the beveled side, but the flush side. I'm going to hold this wire and just cut the smallest bit off so I don't have a lot of waste, but I'm giving it a nice flush cut. So there I've got my flush cut. All right. Now grab your handy dandy large wrap and taps. This is basically, again, a stepped round nose with big old steps. This center one here is 16 millimeters, and that's the one we're going to work on. So we're going to make a big loop here, and it's just like making a basic loop with any round nose. We're going to hold it within the jaw of the pliers, right here, so it's not poking up. You don't want it sticking up like that. See how it's poking out right there? Because that will give you a teardrop shape. Hold it within the jaw of the pliers so that you can't feel it poking up. And I'm going to roll away from me pushing real hard with my thumb here so I make sure I get that shape. Loosen my grip on the tool, bring it back, squeeze, do this as many times as you need to till it comes all the way around. Right there. And I've let it overlap just a little bit. I'm going to show you now how to cut it. To cut this loop, I just wanted to show you the picture here. This is your handout we're looking at here in the, in the video. Right here is the angle you want. See that angle right there, right where the red star is? So take a close look at that in your handout, and I'm going to show you how to cut it. So it's right here. Right now it's very blunt right there, and I like to cut it at an angle this way so that it lays nice and smooth and flush up against that angled wire, this long wire above it. So to do that, I open up my loop a little bit so I can get in with my cutters, and I'm going to cut like that. Can you see that angle? Right there. Oops, got you there. So see that angle right there? So now if I go ahead, it's a little open still, and slide it shut, it goes perfect right up against there. That's kind of an important spot there. It's going to keep everything from falling apart nice and tight. Now I'm going to show you how to make the top loop a little bit smaller. To do the top loop here, we're going to measure from right here out a half an inch. So right here out a half an inch, that's the amount of wire it takes to make this loop, come in with your cutter, cut right out there, I'm just kind of faking it. There we've got about a half inch. And I'm going to use my round nose now. I like the German round nose, it gives you a lot of options 
for loop sizes. I'm going to use about maybe three quarters of the way down and grab the wire. Again, just like making a basic loop. You do not want to feel it poking out here. You'll get a teardrop or an oval shape right here. I'm going to roll away. Now, and usually I would be pushing on this wire with my thumb, but I can't get my thumb down in there. So instead, I'm going to hold the whole thing still. Roll away from you, loosen your grip, bring it back. Continue as many times as you need to until it comes around and touches. Sorry, you weren't able to see that real well. But there, it's come around and touched. I'm happy with that. This got a little distorted from me holding it in my hand. So I'm going to come in with my chain nose, just sort of wiggle it back and forth, get it right back up against there. So there we've got the base of the toggle to do the sculptural work on top of. We've changed the angle of the camera a little bit so you can better see us making the T-bar here. So let's make the T-bar. You started first with six inches of 14 gauge and making the round part of the toggle took up about three inches. So you should be left with three inches here. And we're gonna start in the very center. So if this is three inches, the dead center will be an inch and a half and I'm going to hold that spot with my round nose. Um, if you're using the long round nose, I use about a third of the way down. If you're using short round nose, maybe almost to the base. From here, I'm going to take the two tips and pull them towards each other, watching to make sure they're coming around evenly. Can you see right now that this wire is a little bit longer than this wire? So in that case, I'm going to move only this wire and eat up some of the length here so that when they come together, they're going to be the same length, hopefully. A little bit more. That one's a little bit taller, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm just going to keep going now. I'm going to let them pass each other and move them evenly so they stay as even as possible. Sorry, hiding it there. All right. So now we've got this. Again, this length came out a little bit longer, but that's not the end of the world. They're close enough, but you want to try to get them as close as possible. Okay, from here, we're going to spiral up the ends. So we'll back out a little bit and grab your chain nose. So right now we've got the loop like this and the two ends going out this way. I'm going to form a spiral right here and form a little spiral right there. And you have to keep in mind your initial round end of the toggle that you made and make sure you're not making these ends too short so that it will slip right through and we'll talk about that in a sec. But first let's start to form a little kink and a kink here. Now, we started with a flush cut before and there's reasons for wanting a flush cut, but in this case, we want the flush cut so that we can hang on to the end of this wire with chain nose and not slip right off. So where security reasons we've needed the flush cut before, right now we're just gonna give a little flush cut at the end so we have something nice and flat to hold on to and we won't slip off. Okay, now I've got two flush cuts here. Now I'm going to do a closed loop spiral at the end here. And to do that, I'm going to start with my chain nose, especially wanting my, my chain nose since this is such stiff wire. So it's going to be hard to hang on to it and manipulate it with the round nose. So we're going to work with the chain nose right here. So you're going to need a pretty darn strong chain nose for this. We're going to start out at the very tip of the tool, holding the very tip of the wire. And just like making a basic loop, you're going to roll away from yourself, hold pretty tight because this is some strong stuff, until you've made this little C. So 
a little hook right there. Maybe even roll a tiny bit further. So I'm going to go back in with my chain nose now. Roll just a little bit more. Okay, so right there. Now I need to squish this in and I'm going to base my whole spiral around that. So this is pretty, um, it's pretty nice to have a close up for this. I'm going to show you the plier pl placement. So instead of squeezing right here, if I did that I would get, it would become like long and flat. I'm actually going to shift so that I'm holding right there. I've got this end of the plier out at the very, very tip and this end of the plier is back at the rounded part. If we were looking at this little kink as a U, it's back here at the U, the rounded part of the U, here and here. Now if I squeeze, it's going to tuck that in rather than, again, if I squeezed back here, it would go long and flat, but right here, it'll tuck it. And you got to squeeze kind of slow so you don't slip. Okay, now we're going to back it out a little bit and we're going to form a spiral around that tight little kink. So holding that spiral now within the, or sorry, the kink within the jaw of my pliers. And again, this is pretty strong stuff, so I'm going to keep it way back here towards the box joint, but avoiding any spots on my jaw that might have a little nick in it, but way back here rather than out here, because out here is the weakest part of your tool. You're going to have to squeeze really hard to hold this still, but way back here and push real hard. See what's happening in my thumb here? I'm getting a line in it because I'm really pushing hard. Just forming a little kink and then I'm going to test it against my spar. Well, let's do all that on this side now too. I'll move a little quicker through this. Form my little U. Tuck it in. So now I've got even sides there. I'm going to pick up my round part of my toggle and just test it here. You lay it right on top and pull it all the way to the side. Make sure it doesn't pull through at any spots. You can see how if this was shorter right here, it would just scoot right through. Let's test the other side. That's about perfect. If you find it's overlapping a lot, then just continue your spiral, which will then shrink up this side so that it lays kind of right on top like that. You don't want it way overlapping, but you definitely don't want it too short. So that's perfect. Now, our next step, I wanted to point out right here that because I was squeezing so hard to hold this wire in place to form a spiral, I kind of nicked it up a little bit. Even though I'm using a really high-end tool, when I work with 14 gauge, it's so hard to manipulate that sometimes the tool does dig in there. So if that bothers you, if you've got little nicks here and here, just get out a chasing hammer and a bench block and hammer that flat. It'll give it a nice look and it will pull out those nicks. So this part is optional, but if you did want to pull some of the nicks out of your spiral that you just made on your T-bar because you kind of chewed it up with your chain nose, then get a bench block and a nice chasing hammer. And we're just going to give it a couple of taps here. really watching what part of the metal is getting affected. And stop when you're happy with it. Oftentimes hammering is kind of a security measure to give something strength. We definitely don't need this on the, tw on the 14 gauge because it's so thick, but we're using it for sort of a design element here to uh, pull out those nicks. Now we've completed the base toggle here, which really could be used in any design, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the fun part of jazzing it up a bit, adding in the Bali silver beads, the crystal beads, and our coils, and using our 22 gauge wire. So go ahead and cut two feet of your 22 gauge, and we're going to move into the fun part. Before we get started in the sculptural wire work, I wanted to show you a finished toggle first and talk about a couple things. First of all, this is an oxidized toggle and I'm showing you this one because it really shows the details. So we can talk about the fact that here, we haven't used all that many beads in this toggle. Most of what's filling up the space is the interesting sculptural wire work. 
as beaters, we're used to filling up space by picking up beads. So I want you to kind of put that aside for a sec. And notice here that it's only got one, two, three, four, five, six crystals on this toggle. And one, two, three, four, five, six, I think there's another one hiding under there, Bali silver beads. So we haven't put a ton of beads on here. We're really filling up the space with the sculptural wire work, not forgetting our coils, of course. But just keep that in mind as you're working. Now the fun part. We are gonna add the embellishing wire and beads to our base toggle. And if your toggle is open a tiny bit like mine is, just grab it with your hands and sort of wiggle it back and forth as I push it together to make sure that's really, really tightly closed right there. That's an important little part. So now you've got two feet here of your 22 gauge wire. I'm gonna take this six inches and loosely wrap it around the outside of the base toggle here. And that's sort of gonna be like the base sculptural work that I'm gonna tack into with the other sculptural work on top. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna loop it up and around. a Couple times on this side. purposefully leaving it a little bit loose on the edges so that I can use that looseness to tie in the other wires. Okay, now right about here, I come around where my loop comes in, take that wire and just kind of wrap it around it. it. Just does a nice job of shutting that up a little bit. Bring that around there. So I've sort of run out of my six inches, which is fine. I can scoot everything else around, but this last little tail, I'm just gonna coil it around the base. Just end it that way. Nothing fancy. This is all gonna be covered up. Just make sure it doesn't poke off. So I'm giving it a little squeeze here. We don't want it poking out at all. And I think I need a, one more little wrap here. Okay. So I want to have it where the looseness of the wire is sort of on the outside of the loop. If I had them sticking way in like this with that slack in the inside there, I'd just give it a little push so it ends up more on the outside over here or over here. So this is about right. This is good. I'm now going to take my wire and do some fun sculptural work, adding in beads a little bit here and there all over this here. So. I kind of concentrate on a small area. I might concentrate right here. And I'm gonna just randomly like, maybe start by going through the center. And then maybe just come back over here. There's not much rhyme or reason to this. Maybe this is a spot where I'm ready to pick up a bead. Maybe try to get that through and under. So I'm kind of just making a little mess here. Now this wire, this is gonna happen a lot, you'll see in the wire work. It wants to pull down and kink like that. As you get close, turn it with your hand so that it can't form a kink. And you'll notice the whole time I'm holding this whole base toggle with my hand here so that as I pull on this, I'm not distorting anything. Let me just get a little bit more on here. Maybe I'll change directions and come from that end through. So be real sculptural here. Don't try to be all super organized. And Maybe I'll add in one of my coils. Again, I'm working with the shiny coils here. So I'm just sort of stitching in and out here. Now once you've got, well, let's put one more Bali silver bead in. Well, our first actually. So notice I'm trying to fill up this space here with wire work. I'm not picking up beads to give it density from you know here all the way over to here. I've only got two beads and one coil on. But here's the fun part. So I'm gonna take that tail and just hold it over here on my hand. And back over here, I'm gonna come in with my chain nose. And these loose wires here, I'm gonna tighten them up 
just by grabbing them and shifting my pliers. At the same time, I'm going to grab, turn, and sort of place at the same time. It's going to tighten it up here and give it some really nice texture. So this outside wire here, I'm just going to grab from this direction with my pliers. I don't want to go at the side because then the texture will face out this way. I want to kind of come in from the top. So grab and hold everything still with your left hand so that you don't end up totally distorting the wire work. Twist and kind of place it at the same time. You see where I am right there. And now maybe over here. Twist and place it. So you can see it's adding a lot of texture. It's also tightening up the wires, which I purposefully didn't have them tight in the beginning because I knew I wanted to add this step for the texture. It's getting a little thick here for me. So I'm going to come in with my tool, kind of squeeze everything down gently. I don't want to do any smashing. Let's try to zoom in on that little section right there. So you can see the amount of texture I've added. And we're gonna do this all the way around. I've just added some more work out here and I'm about to tighten up. So I'll grab here and add some texture there and maybe grab this big long wire here. Now see if I just move it like this without supporting it, it just assorts all the work. So I'm going to support it there. Add that little texture spot right there. And what I want to point out is I am trying to keep all the wire work out here. And I'm only tacking in and out of the existing sculptural wire work or the open loops that I built in the very beginning. Let me show you the back. There's no wire work back here. I mean, there's the, there's the first little loops, but I'm not putting the sculptural stuff on top of that. I'm leaving it all on here. So this toggle definitely has a front and a back. The problems I see in class is sometimes people loop all the way around the base wire with every step. And so what happens there is you just end up adding a lot of wire to the back that doesn't get seen. So it's sort of wasted. Um, you certainly can make a toggle that's double-sided. You just might, might need to start with more wire because the two feet should be just about enough to add it to just a one side of this. Let me show you a, another finished toggle here. So notice how the top, there's lots of stuff going on. And then the back, you really see the base because we've only looped around it a couple of times just as a structural element. Okay, so back to this guy. I'm almost done here, and I also want to point out that I've only picked up one, two, three, four beads and two of my spirals, I mean my coils. So again, try to fill up the space with the wire, and it's actually kind of bothering me that right here is pretty empty. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse back. First I'm going to pick up one of my Bali Silver beads. I'm going to change directions and go back there and fill that spot. You can always do that. I mean, at any point here, you can change directions. You can even add in wire if you feel like you need to. So I'm going to pull that wire down tight and kind of place that bead exactly where I want it to go. And that worked pretty well. And then just sort of loop around and feed back over to where I was before. to finish up this side. Now this one's getting a little funky, I gotta say. It's like lots of stuff going on here, a little bit empty there, and then this is pretty thick. So what I'll probably do is f beef up this side like I did over here. Probably have enough wire to just come around and fill in right there, put a bead right there. And that should make the whole outside edge equivalent to this thickness here. And I'll be pretty happy with that. Or I can press that in a little bit just to thin it out. I am just about done here. I've done all my sculptural work around the outside. I'm super happy the way this one turned out. I ended up leaving out a crystal because I kind of tried to evenly space the crystals and ended up just putting in five and rather than just cramming that sixth one in there, I'm just going to leave them out. Um, was left out a couple Bali silver beads too, no big deal. But now I have this little tail to deal with. 
And the way I deal with this is I find a spot on the toggle within the wire work where there's like kind of a nice naked spot, a little long straight wire with nothing on it. I'm gonna take this tail and wrap it up and around that wire there, sort of forming a coil. It's like tying a knot in a way and that's gonna case stay sturdy and we're gonna be done. So for this, you're probably gonna need to use your chain nose and grab out at the tip and sort of bend it around. See what I'm doing here? To get it in that direction and tuck underneath that wire. You can zoom in on that a little bit and see it a little closer. So I just want you to see if you can. Right here, I've tucked around this straight wire back here. Here's my looping wire. And unfortunately with 22 gauge, I can't just pull really hard and have it tighten. So I'm gonna pull a little bit. And from there, I'm gonna have to come in with my tool and sort of boss it around. Get on either side of it. Move it this way if you need to. There, that's better. Give it a little squinch there, sorry. And now one more time, twice around is usually about sufficient. Then I'm gonna come in and cut a little bit long here so that I can take my chain nose, let me see if I can position this for you, and tuck it around. And that last little bit gets tucked under because I don't like seeing tails. You can squish that together. So now it just looks like a coil. I just want to take a look at it now and make sure I didn't distort anything in that whole process. I kind of made this stick out a little bit. So I'm going to come in right here and do a little kink right there. That's not really to give it texture there, but more to tighten in that wire. So that, now that side isn't sticking out weird. And I might kind of give them a little smush. That is good. I am happy with that. So there's your completed sculptural wire work toggle. The tornado toggle. design ideas here. On this one right here, instead of using the 22 gauge and the beads uh, separated between two toggles, I put all the 22 gauge and all the beads on one toggle. So I'll have some 14 gauge left over, but I put everything here and kind of beefed it up a bunch just to give you a look at how you can get a little crazy with this. Over here on this one, I've actually used about 30 crystals, no Bali silver, a couple spirals, and about three feet of 24 gauge. So I shrunk the gauge down a little bit to give it a tiny bit of a different look in the texture and tossed in a lot more beads. So the basic design that we talk about um, in the project we just did is just a general recipe to go for, but feel free to go crazy and add lots of wire and lots of beads. Here's another design idea. This is a necklace that I've made, but I've used the toggle as the closure and I actually wear it in the front so it acts as a clasp and a pendant. Here I've used the toggle as my clasp for this bracelet made from tornado beads. These tornado beads are actually the inspiration for this toggle. I felt like I just needed something to fill the space where the clasp ends up and I wanted the technique to look similar to what I've used in the beads. Turns out this makes a really nice bracelet. So how did it go? You made a tornado toggle, maybe two. I hope you enjoyed it. I showed you a lot of different techniques, so now you've got the ability and the technology to build a bunch of these. And again, use them as centerpieces or clasps, bigger or smaller. I hope you enjoyed the uh, couple different designs that I showed you towards the end there. And I hope to see you again for another class. Thanks.